What is up guys, Mo Bogsley here, back at it again with another Flesh and Blood video. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at the top heroes for this upcoming ProQuest season. This is a week zero slash week one look at the meta. Uh, the SCG event did just happen last night. I did look at the heroes, I saw what was in the top eight, what was doing decent. But I've also played a lot of playtesting to try to figure out which hero you should be taking to the ProQuest. And you know, which one? Eh, maybe, maybe not so much. So uh, let's start this out. So first, let's look at Kano. I love Kano. Kano's a ton of fun. He's a ton of fun, let's just leave it at that. However, he lacks in his health. He lacks in being able to block. A lot of his cards block for two. He's a good deck, but he's very hard to play. However, with this meta being so fast, I believe Kano is viable. I think this is the perfect meta for Kano. Um... The best decks right now are super fast, super aggressive, super like in your face, red heavy decks. They just want to get damage in quickly and end the game as quick as possible. So Kano can take advantage of that by having huge combo turns early on. However, he doesn't get the late game setup that he might need. So I'm going to put Kano in viable. We'll see how that changes as we go on. Next, we're looking at Dash. Dash is my favorite hero from last season, I think. I brought it to Nationals. I brought her to all the like the tournaments that were going on, all the skirmishes, all the fun events. Um, I love, love, love Dash. However, in a super competitive meta, in a super fast meta, not my bad, in a super fast meta, I think she's decent. However, where she's going to struggle is Starvo. I think Starvo is going to be really good in the Dash, but Dash is good in the rest of the field. So because of that, I think she's going to be somewhat viable. At the, I mean, viable, like, right on that line of, like, she's good, but she's not great. Like, she can get the wins, but, eh. Next is Azalea. So in my meta, we have a very competent Azalea player who is very good at Azalea. They are not high on Azalea. I'm not high on Azalea. I think they can sneak out wins, but just don't bring Azalea to your pro quest unless you're a master at her. She is a fun hero, but she requires a lot of practice and a lot of good draws to be able to combo those red and ledger turns over and over and over again. Uh, Viscerai Runeblood. So, Viserai, I've done a lot of testing. I have about 10 hours with Viserai in the last two weeks. And I think he's the real deal. I think Viserai is the deck to take to your local pro quest. However, 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 you need to put the time and the work into Viserai to make him work. He's not a pick up, oh, look, we're playing, you know, an aggro deck that we just drop our hand every turn. Viserai takes a lot of skill, a lot of playtesting, and a lot of practice to see those lines and get maximum arcane damage. Or to know when to pivot to the one turn kill variant or the mid range variant or the temporary variant. There's a lot of a lot of small decisions that can really squeak out percentage points, but you need to be very good at playing them to do well. So Vizra I think is the best deck going into ProQuest so far. However, he's gonna be very, very hard to play perfectly. Um next up is Prism. So when Everfest got spoiled, I thought Prism was gonna be up here. I thought Prism was gonna be the competitive deck, the deck to beat. However, when the meta shakes out and an aggro Viserai deck is really good, Briar is still good, you have Starvo, I honestly think Prism falls down as somewhat viable. I don't think she's that good in this meta. She gets ran over too fast. Starvo destroys her, Viserai destroys her, uh, Briar destroys her, Chain destroys her. All these top decks are just going to punch Prism in her face and she won't have time to set up. So Prism players will still play Prism. I think you cut Library, though. I think Library is just too slow in this current meta. And Library is one of your best cards. So when you're cutting Library, you're kind of cutting a lot of value from the deck. Um, next is Sir Bolton. Um, Bolton was never really in the meta in the last meta. Like, Sabres were, like, here. I think last meta Sabres were, like, somewhat viable. With Everfest, though, he doesn't really get anything that spicy. Nothing really changes. I think he goes to not viable. He might actually be in D tier as well. Like, he might be hanging out with Azalea. He might be. But I just, I don't think you're going to see many Boltons. And if you do, they're probably on Sabres. And if you play against Sabres, just know how to block out his combo turns and he loses. Like, it's very easy to just block him out. Uh, next up is Chain. So Chain is my all-time favorite hero with... That's not good. Um... <laughs> That's not good at all. Oh my god. Uh, all right, let's just see if we can, like, jerry-rig this really fast. All right, that's left perfect. Um, a little sneak peek behind us. Um, so Chain was my all-time favorite hero before I started playing Dash. 
Uh, I won the Road to Nats event with Chain. I took Chain to the first ever calling in Vegas that I went to. I love Chain. However, with this new meta, how does he fit? I think Everfest was insane for Chain. Chain got so many great tools. I think Chain is right next to Viserai. I think Chain and Viserai are like shaking hands. They're like, this is a Runeblade meta. Like, they are happy to see each other. And I would be scared to sit against a Chain or a Viserai at any at any of these pro quests coming up. They are both insanely good heroes. Uh, so look out for both of those. I should say those are both two great picks. Uh, next is Leviah. We're really going to talk about Leviah. She's garbage. She's trash. Listen, I love her art. Smash with Big Tree is awesome. But from a competitive standpoint, Leviah does not have the legs that she needs to be good right now. Uh, hopefully in the future, Leviah can be like up here in the viable strategy. Because I love Leviah from a lore and a character standpoint. But let's be honest. She's in D tier. I'm sorry, all you Leviah lovers. I know there's like two of you out there. It's rough out there, but not right now. Next up is Dory. So Dory's one of those heroes, and in Blitz, she's like... A tier in Blitz, right? Like, in Blitz, she will knock everybody, everybody out of their seats. However, when it comes to Classic Constructed, she was always, like, not viable to someone viable, right? Like, she's not great, but she's not terrible. However, there's a new Dory Axis build that plays exactly like Ira does. Like, this is, like, an Ira Classic Constructed deck. And I think she's viable. I think she's below Dash. I think, actually, Dash should be there above Kano. Can I... There you go. So, I think right now... She is viable. She, she's viable. She's there. You can play Dory. You can probably spike a pro quest with Dory right now. I would say any of these, like, from someone viable up, you can spike a pro quest with, and the higher up, the better odds you will have. Um, Dory is in a good position right now. Her hatchets build is very cool, very good. So I would expect to see some Dorys at your local pro quest. Uh, next is Reinhardt. So Reinhardt is always that deck that's always, like, somewhat viable. It's never competitive, it's never viable, it's always just there, hanging out, waiting for the meta to strike. Waiting for that perfect meta, when they can take advantage of people. I don't think this is it. I think he's right here next to Prism. I think he's somewhat viable. I think he can beat these best decks. I think he's great in the dash. He destroys dash. I think he's really good against Kano, because the 10 less health is huge. I think he can do well against Viserai. I'm not sure, though, because I think he just got OTK for Viserai, so I think that's a bad matchup. And Chain, I'm not sure. But I think if you if you know how to play Reinhardt, you can take him. He's definitely the best brute that we have. He can end the games fast. He can intimidate your whole hand. I can see Reinhardt doing well. Now, here's Bravo, the showstopper. So, not, not Starvo, just Bravo. And so, Bravo last meta was up here. He was one of the top three, right? It was him, Briar, and you can argue for Viserai. You can argue for a lot of other decks. You can argue for Prism. I think it was probably Prism, Bravo, Prism, Bravo, Briar last meta. However, I think Bravo fell off here. I think Bravo is no longer one of the top three decks to beat. Instead, I think Briar's down here. I think he's like right next to Dash. I think him and Dash are like shaking hands. They're both good decks. But again, they struggle against the top decks. They can get wins. They can easily get wins, but they're not insanely good. So, if, you're, if you have a Bravo deck sleeved up, you can easily take this Bravo to your local tournament, and you can win it. Bravo's in a really good spot. But, I think these aggro decks are the better way to go right now. Next is Katsu. So, Katsu last meta, I would say, was right about here. Some viable. He was there. Nobody was really playing him. And then Everfest comes out. People are excited. There's a new 100 wins combo. Everyone's like, oh my god, 100 wins. Katsu's the new goodness. Katsu is amazing now. We have 100 wins. We have new combo lines. We have more ways to, you know, tilt the games in our favor. Uh, after testing probably about six games against Katsu, I honestly think he is down here. I don't think you can play Katsu in this meta. He's not fast enough. All these decks tempo him better than he can tempo. He can sneak out wins, but I honestly think he's worse than Azalea right now. I would rather take Azalea than Katsu. I would maybe even take Leviathan over Katsu at this point. That's how bad I think Katsu is in this current meta. Kadachi for one does not do enough anymore. Kadachi for one. Kadachi for one. Anything else. Like, people learn the play patterns. People learn how to play against Katsu. I just don't think he's in a great spot right now. Next is Old Him. Old Him was also one of the giants from the last meta. Old Him is very good. He's very slow, though. The problem with Old Him is you need enough time to finish your games. And Flesh and Blood is a very slow game. So you don't always have time to finish all of your games. 
However, Oldham, I think right now, I think Oldham is fine in the Viserai. He's fine in the chain. You can give him frostbites, you know, you have all your, your, your cute stuff. Um, I think Oldham's fine. I think Oldham goes right here. I think there's, like, a lot of viable decks right now. I think this is a healthy meta. Like, this is a healthy meta where if you play any of the viable or competitive decks, you are going to do fine. And I think Oldham goes right here into this section. Uh, next we have Briar. Briar was the best deck last season. It's not even a thought behind it. It was the easiest deck to play. One of the cheapest decks to play. It was just a really good aggro deck that you can just drop your hand every turn and just say, do I kill you yet? Okay, do I kill you yet? Okay, do I kill you yet? Uh, however, some stuff got banned. Ball Lightning got banned. She got eroded. Plunder Run got banned. She got hit hard. Uh, but I still think she's right here. I still think she is a competitive deck that with Channel Mount Heroic, she will just steal games from any other deck. What I would say, though, is I believe she loses the chain, but I think it's like 50-50 against Viserai. I think her and Viserai are pretty 50-50, but I think she just gets smoked by chain because uh, chain can just go so much faster than she can go. But Briar is still a great meta pick. If you have the Briar deck built, change it to Channel Mount Heroic, get those wins in, go play that bingo. Go bingo! Um, next up, we have Lexi. So, Lexi was, like, here last meta. She could squeak out wins against all the decks, but she was never really that good. Uh, she doesn't get much with Everfest. There's no new ice cards. There's no new cool, like, you know, combo freeze attacks you can do. I honestly think Lexi goes right here. She's somewhat viable. I maybe even put her above Prism. Because, like, Lexi against Viserai is interesting. Lexi against Chain. Like, Lexi against the top three decks, I think Lexi's good against. However, Lexi against these decks, I would not want to play Lexi. Uh, she just gets blown out by these defensive decks. But she can beat the aggro decks. So she's like she's bad against the, the top three decks. But good against like the medium decks. So she's fine. You can bring Lexi. I would say Ice Lexi is the way you go. I think Lightning Lexi is not there. So now let's talk about Bravo Star of the Show. I do not have a Bravo Star of the Show here. So we're going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to use... Leviya as Bravo. Where does Bravo Star of the Show sit? So I think Bravo Star of the Show is an interesting deck. I played about 20 games with him so far. Played a lot of hands. Played a lot of testing. I thought Bravo Star of the Show was me the deck to beat. And I think it is. However, I think it's like this. I think... Oh, actually, that's kind of confusing. Let's use uh, Katsu. So I think Bravo Star of the Show is right here. So I don't think that Bravo is like the busted deck. But I think he's the new hotness that everybody is jumping into. Everybody wants to play the new deck. Everybody wants to play the easiest deck. I think Bravo Star of the Show is by far the easiest deck that has ever existed in Flesh and Blood history. You look at your hand. Do you have the combo? Yes. You swing, dominate, go again. Swing your hammer in. Arsenal a card, go. Do you have it again? Yes, you go. But I don't think it's a very hard deck to play. I think it's the deck that you pick up. If you want to go spike a pro quest and you don't want to practice. If you have no practice into this meta, take Bravo Star of the Show and you will win games. If you want to put the time and you want to put the effort, you want to put the hard work in, play one of these three decks. Because these three decks will reward your skill and game knowledge. While Bravo Star of the Show will just win games based on hitting the combo early and hitting it often enough. But that's still a really good meta choice. So I think it goes Viserai, Bravo Star of the Show... Chain, Briar, in that order. Those are the four top decks to beat. And of course, there are three Rune Blades, one Guardian. But I think this meta is so healthy because once you get past the top four decks, you look like this, right? You go, okay, we have a Mechanologist. We have a Guardian. We have an Elemental Guardian. We have a Wizard. We have a Warrior. Like, this meta is so healthy right now. I think the one downside is it's such a fast meta with all four of these decks being able to kill you super fast. As early as turn three or four, I've seen. So you have to be very careful in this meta. But if you have a plan, you have a game plan, you can take Dash, Bravo, Oldham, Kana, or Dory and win these pro quests. You should put the practice in and know how to beat them. Let me know how you think about this in the comments below. Is your tier list a lot different than mine? Is your tier list the same? How do you feel about this meta? Do you like it? Do you like the new Bravo? Let me know. Also, please like and subscribe. That would mean a lot. Have a good night, everybody. I will see you guys in the next video.